Hello everyone! Uh, this video is about campgrounds along the Salmon River in Idaho. It is fall here, which is a fantastic time to get out, chasing the color changes, and avoid summer crowds. Plus, you get to give us a woohoo as we hit a milestone with the truck. If you've been following along on our adventures through the summer, you know that we are now meandering from Sandpoint, Idaho through Montana. We hung out in Thompson Falls, and then we spent a morning doing some supplies and errands in Missoula, and then we headed to Salmon, Idaho. Salmon is where we left Jeep behind for the week, and it's time to pick her up. Hold on, it's a biggie. Here we are at a momentous occasion. The, we're about ready to roll over 200,000 miles on the truck. Uh, I've had it since 151,000 miles. This makes, you know, it about 49,000 miles of my driving. Probably about somewhere on the 13 or 14,000 miles with Maximus built onto it. And probably about 70,000 miles on the engine. Let's see if we can uh, creep along and get this to, to go over without having an accident. <laughs> Crazy. There it goes. Did it. The proud owner of a 200,000 mile truck. <laughs> and there are many more to go. And many more miles to go. Our first stop is the Cottonwood Recreation Area outside of Ellis, Idaho, and it's right off of Highway 93. $5 daily fee when the water's not available, $10 a night otherwise. This looks like a great place for some bucks a night. We're gonna drive the campground loop, show you some of it. There's campground host that's still here. I'm gonna switch sides here. It's like sights right along the water even. One, two, three, four. And this this site right here is a pull through. Most of them look like they're back ends, but maybe a couple pull throughs.
We have passed this campground three times. I think this is our fourth time driving past it this summer. So it was really a good opportunity just to kind of take a break. We're going to take a break in the day use area and, and give a short review of the campground. But look how beautiful this is. This is a forest service campground called Cottonwood. It's between Chalice and Salmon, because that's the drive we're taking today. We are about maybe 20 miles north of Chalice. That's where it's located. I'll put a map a picture into the video on the review. And this, uh, it even has a boat launch here, so let's go check it out. So I found a map next to the boat launch here. You can kind of see where we are in the middle. There, but lots of fishing access up and down. So I'm sure my idea of coming here to camp and then taking the Jeep out and dropping the kayak in the river would pay off. Look how beautiful this is. Huge grassy area. So if you're coming up just for day use, huge grassy area. Picnic tables, bathroom, standing in front of the restroom. And this is kind of funny, but I'm going to show you the inside of these vault toilets. This is the most amazing vault toilets I've ever seen. So this is the women's. Look at that. Full on artwork to sit at. You know what? These bathrooms are probably locked all the time when people are here because they just can't get away from the view. How amazing is that? It is signed, so there's an artist attached to this. I don't usually go to the men's, but here you go. Steve said it was fish, and it sure is salmon. So it's five dollars if you're camping here to use the dump station, ten dollars if you are just driving passing through and you need the dump station. Plus some fresh water. Next stop is our end destination for the night. There are several campgrounds along Idaho 75 and the Salmon River. This is a forest service area near the historic town of Sunbeam. So we are staying in the Upper O'Brien Campground. I'll do a walk about here so you can see the sites. There are nine sites total. And we got a ton of rain last night and a nice little water puddle in our drawers and kitchen area this morning. And as you can tell, there's some snow up on the mountain. How cool is that? So this is where you drive in, come down. That's site two. Site one is actually behind me in the middle of the loop. We are site three. And this just kind of loops around. I'll go up to the other end and show you a couple more sites. Got a couple trailers up there in a big site. And this middle site is pretty long, so you can get a nice trailer in there. 
as you drop down from the road, which is on the other side of the creek, and you cross that bridge over there. Just drive on down. It's like there's um, tables, fire rings, and a vault toilet. We are in off season now, so the fee is $8 a night. You got your self pace fee station, and then just a quick note this is a 10 day stay limit. Extra vehicle parking is available, although our site was long enough where we put the Jeep next to the truck. So the last site here is nine. Great view of the water. You can actually go down and there's a nice rocky beach. And the water level is really much higher than it was last night after all that rain already. We go up this road a bit and there's a lower O'Brien campground. Which is closed for the season. It closed at the end of August. Site 9 is the double site, and then there's 7 and 8 at the end of this loop, and some additional parking. This is the lower O'Brien campground, which you access from the road, just the same road that we came in and stopped at the upper O'Brien campground. So we drove through yesterday from Chalice along the 75. We are camped right about one of these spots. And we're gonna just relocate ourselves and go up to Yankee Fork path there. And then tomorrow we'll head out through Stanley and over by Little Red Fish Lake. Our next camp area is along the Yankee Fork where I discovered all the small Forest Service campgrounds are actually free. And there's even dispersed camping back further towards the ghost town area. We settled on Blind Creek Campground for our next two days. The campgrounds all along here have five to nine sites and the same amenities such as fire pits, tables, a vault, toilet. In summary, we can honestly say we'd be happy to stay at any of these camping areas in the future. 
especially off season when they're mostly empty, of course. In the busy season, we'd probably spend time going back further along the Yankee Fork and locating a dispersed site instead. Uh, the negatives through this area were only that cell service was non-existent, which can also be a positive. And it's non-existent until you get further west on the Idaho 75 and closer to Stanley, Idaho. We also did run into unlevel sites at Blind Creek, of course, so there's probably the possibility that other areas would be unlevel and a little challenging. We were disappointed that the lower O'Brien campground was closed, as that would have been our preferred camp area over the upper campground. Hope you enjoyed the review of these campgrounds. This area is beautiful. It probably can be busy in the summer. We don't know for certain. Uh, there was quite a few more campgrounds as we left our particular area and drove through into Stanley, Idaho. So there are lots of options to choose from and I'm sure there's room for everybody who wants to go check out uh, the Salmon River area and maybe even do some rafting. Now, we just didn't camp. We did spend some time on two things that were surprises while we were camping in this part of Idaho. One, unfortunately, was a very leaky window problem and we will talk about that in our next video. And the other was discovering gold mining equipment in the Custer Ghost Town. That was pretty cool. Not wanting to make this video too long, we will continue those in our part two. So check it out and we look forward to seeing you next week. Pretty nice place.